and welcome back. Today, a treat. We have the Walkman WM EX102. Fairly pathetic, cheap, plasticky little thing. It does have the uh, AVLS, whatever that stands for. A switch for chrome tape or for normal. Headphone socket, the usual. Uh, it doesn't have an, a, even an eject button. You have to pry it apart. Um, and has no screws. There are no screws hidden underneath there. There are no screws hidden underneath there. This is a non-repairable piece of crud. Um, I put some batteries in it and nothing happened. So we're going to have a look inside and see if the motor still works. And we're going to do that with extreme prejudice. Okay, that's that bit removed. Oh, look, there's the mega base switch. Yeah, that's how you open one of these. As you can see, it's a finely crafted piece of equipment. Um, there's the head. It has no way of recording, of course. This is only a play-only a play only head. Um, some little chippy, little chippy bits. A couple of capacitors. And a motor, which is the only bit we're really interested in. And, and a small belt. Maybe that was what the problem was. The motors on these are kind of quiet, so it's entirely possible I couldn't hear it. That, that uh, belt has come to the end of its life. Um, mechanism looks like it's still in fairly good condition, so you could harvest some of these gears if you felt like it. But there's probably not much reason to do so. So let's have a look at the motor, which actually does have a couple of screws. So I will resist the temptation to beat it to death even further. And I will remove the screws like a sensible, civilized human being. And let's see if we can get this thing a spinning. Just remove the wires. And again, this is a little pancake motor. Um, it's probably a single speed. June 1994. Let's have a look and see if feeding it 14 volts does it any good. Obviously it runs on two AA batteries, which is three volts for those of you keeping score at home. Um, Bring in old, the old reliable train transformer. And that's a one. And as always, turn everything off before you plug it in, just in case. Sometimes it's good to get your fingers further away from where the sparks might be, especially if you're doing something with more than just a few volts. So there we have it. Power on. Nothing from the motor. Nothing. Not even a hint of a. So that's pretty much a dead loss. But that's what one of these looks like on the inside. I'm just going to Yep, no, we do have power. Oh, there we go. Today, everything squeaks. So, good old WD-40. There we go, so much nicer. WD-40 is not really the answer because it's, it's more of a solvent than a um, lubricant. So very quickly the bearings, if there are actually any ball bearings in here, are going to crap out because I've just soaked them in solvent, not lubricant. But it get, does get rid of the squeaking. And this, interestingly, is a nicely variable speed motor and 3 volts is probably about there. Let me stick some tape on it and we'll have a look at how fast it goes. Oh, 
turn it on. So this is pretty rapid. That's as slow as I can get it to go. That's doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's probably doing two hundred RPM, and then we can get up to. You can probably hear that humming away. And I think we toasted it. Or we toasted the power supply, one of the two. Let's try that again. Nope, we toasted the, power, the uh, motor itself. Well, that was nice while it lasted. There's a warning for you. Don't run something that runs on 3 volts on 14 volts. Or it's kaput time. Anyway, that's what the inside of a cheap Walkman looks like. Quite an interesting array of gears. If you were making a prop or something, you might find some use for them. It goes in different directions depending on which button you press, forward or reverse. Forward, reverse, driving a different wheel. I'm quite surprised that made, made it through being hammering. Anyway, that's all I've got. See you next time.